Hey guys, welcome into the Bear With Us podcast. I'm Jack. He is Frank. Uh, no Nas currently. He couldn't be fucking bothered because he said, "Oh, that shit quarterback is traded." Let's. I don't care. Uh, but no, uh, Frankie, we 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 got a, a somber episode, a somber emergency podcast to to talk about right now. Uh, if you're unaware, the Chicago Bears have traded quarterback Justin Fields to the Pittsburgh Steelers for a 2025 sixth round pick that is conditional, uh, could become a fourth round pick based on playing time. That is all the information that we have currently uh, about the pick. Frankie, we, we didn't we didn't talk at all. We, we said, can you do a, an emergency podcast? You said, yes, we didn't talk through it literally at all. Oh, wait, Frankie, I have some additional information. This is from Adam Schefter. The 2025 sixth round pick that the Steelers traded to the Bears for Justin Fields will become a fourth round pick if he plays in 51% of the plays this season. That is per a source it's a, for it's Adam It's a 2025? 2025. Wow. Sixth round pick. That can become a fourth round pick if Justin plays over half the season. Which, I mean, he might. I, I, I feel like I have quite a few thoughts. Jack about the like almost start anywhere you want. We can start anywhere you want. I, so the place, the place that I would like to start is um, I've refrained in these past episodes. We've assumed that Caleb Williams was going to be the quarterback of the bears for the 2024, 2025 season. Cause they're going to win the super bowl. They'll play into 2025. Um, So, but the, the one thing that I've sort of, alluded to through a lot of our episodes, uh, whether you were here, whether Nas was here, whether all three of us were here, was that I'm going to get something off of my chest um, because, you know, again, I, I, I totally understand Justin's fourth quarter numbers, not great, not even good. I mean, they were bad. They were very bad. There were certain things about his game that still need to be cleaned up, that he, he's not perfect. He's not even good in certain areas. But obviously he had these elite flashes with the arm, with the legs. I mean, he just, you know, was a phenomenal athlete. The one thing that I never did or never tried to do was give too much unfair criticism. We've criticized Justin on this show, just like we will any player if we see that they're not improving or just whatever. I mean, we're fucking content creators. We're going to you know do, do things sometimes. Um, what I did not like, though, were people who were just acting like he was a complete bum um, and, and, and just sort of neglecting the situation in Chicago, because, and, and, and this is really what I'm getting off my chest. At no point was Justin Fields set up for success here in Chicago. Um, again, it's not to say if he would have been drafted even into a perfect situation that he would have been good. We don't know that, right? We just, we, we really don't know. But I feel bad for him. I do. Because he got drafted by a regime who was very clearly on their way out. It was a lame duck season. He should have never even been drafted to Chicago. Um, he gets here, he hasn't, you know, a rookie season. It, it was what it was. You saw the flashes, um, coaching staff, the whole front office gets fired and you get, you bring in a defensive head coach with an OC who was very clearly in over his head. He's not very good at what he does, or at least he's not good at game planning and, and, and catering to what he actually has. Let's just say that. Cause maybe he is a good offensive coordinator if he has the right pieces. Um, and then even if you were to keep him, you were talking about yet another OC, right? And 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 to add even more context, it's not even like, hey, this was a roster that was like ready to win. They got a new coaching staff that was going to put them over the top. This thing was completely torn down, like to, to a, a degree that we rarely see NFL teams do anymore, right? Like the NFL are, are retoolers. Look at what Minnesota, Minnesota's going to try to retool. All these teams just try to retool. No one does, like the only one, other one that comes to mind was the the whole uh, Hugh Jackson thing in Cleveland when they like really re, you know tore everything right. down and they got all those draft picks and Ryan Poles essentially did that to a, a lesser degree obviously um, and it's like you you have a guy who is still I think very supremely talented a guy who I think can be still successful in this league but because of the circumstance and it's not to take away any personal accountability we know that he didn't improve in certain areas but. Again, year two, he was dealing with Dante Pettis and Equinemius St. Brown. Like, we were welcome fucking... Welcome back, Dante. Welcome back, Dante, by the way. But we were... Jack, we were fucking excited to give Nikhil Harry a flyer. Like, that's how bad things were. 
You know what I mean? And I, I just feel bad that now that we're loading up the roster, and again, it's not his fault, and I'm not even blaming the front office. It's just so situational, and that's what makes me feel bad for him, is that all of this is just a bad circumstance, even to a point to the actual trade and what the Bears netted in return, which I think we can get to. Jack, what were just sort of some of the raw thoughts about it all for you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know if we've seen a, a quarterback with, with less of a fair shake in terms of yeah. just overall talent. Uh, as a first round pick, as a team that traded up to go, it's not like they just sat back and were like, oh, Justin's on the board. We'll throw a dart and let's we'll see what happens. they traded up for this man. And, and and the fact that Ryan Pace was allowed to do that with, like you were saying, in a very clear, you know, uh, just lame duck situation, whether it was for the head coach or for the GM, obviously it ended up being for both. And then you hire, like you said, a defensive head coach, an offensive coordinator, and, and and possibly brought in a GM who didn't necessarily even believe in the quarterback that they were going to be saddled with. It, it, it I, I, I don't know if we'll ever see a situation like this again. And he had those flashes, like you said, you know, against the Pittsburgh Steelers in that rookie season was his, by far his best game. So I wonder if maybe that, that had Mike Tomlin on notice a little bit. But uh, it, it is a sad end. Um, to the Justin Fields era. Uh, absolutely not how I envisioned this turning out, if I'm being completely honest. Uh, if if this Bears team didn't have the first overall pick, I, I genuinely don't think this would be a conversation. I don't think Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, Michael Penix, I don't think any of those guys pushed the needle to the point that obviously Caleb Williams does and, and will for the Chicago bears uh, as the, as presumably quote unquote, their next quarterback, uh, the trade itself. And, and honestly, Frank, I'm going to talk the trade, but also the process. Cause I haven't gotten a chance. Uh, I don't know how much you and Nas were able to, to kind of go into the, the, the process for just kind of overall, but, Frank, I fucking hate this this haul, this the haul, this return, I should say, that the Bears are getting back for Justin Fields. Like you just said and alluded to, a 2025 sixth round pick, not a 2024. Now, they're not getting anything this year, which, again, I granted, it, it wouldn't be for this year because how would you have the conditional side of it? They're getting a pick for next year that could become a fourth round pick. If he plays over half the season when, oh yeah, they just signed Russell Wilson to be their quote unquote starter. Now, do I think that it's likely that Justin Fields will probably push Russell Wilson at some point early on this season? Yeah, I, I, I think ultimately you don't make this trade if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers to just let Russell Wilson take the reins and, and run with it, especially after you just traded one of their better weapons and Deontay Johnson to the to the Carolina Panthers. Like if you think that Justin Fields is worth taking a flyer on and again. For less than what the Cowboys gave up for Trey Lance. If you think he's worth trading anything for, you're going to want to see what he looks like in this offense, right? What what he looks like with Najee Harris, what he, you know, that relationship with him and, and uh, George Pickens, like, you're not going to just let him sit on the bench. You, you're going to let Russell will, I just, why the fuck did they sign Russell Wilson? I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. I, I don't get it. I, I hate this return. Uh, and ultimately I just, I know Ryan Pohl saying that he wanted to do what's right by Justin. I, I think that was just such a load of shit because there were so many opportunities, so many opportunities to move Justin to a different opportunity. Now, granted, he may get a chance to start, and I do think he will start a good amount of games for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but he's going into a situation where he already has that competition, where there were so many other opportunities that you could have, if you wanted to, push that trade to happen and get him into a scenario. This already isn't a big haul, a big return. What the fuck else was out there? We've seen fucking guys get traded. We saw Sam Howell go for more than this. What, what are we yeah. doing here? I mean, so this, this is ridiculous. Here, right? here, here, here's where pissed. I have, here's where I have even more thoughts. And like some of the thoughts are slight pushback to you, but I don't know if we'll ever know the answers to this. Um, the prevailing thought or one of the prevailing thoughts was that Ryan Poles really wasn't shopping him yet because they wanted to be super certain on Caleb, which I said this last week. I've said this numerous times in our, our you know, through via text. 
I get being sure, but you're taking a chance regardless. J just in the sense that you know what Justin is, even if you don't think he's good enough, you know what he is. So you're taking a dive into the unknown regardless. So like you gotta, you know, if, if you were really holding on to him to wait for some conversation that you needed to have with Caleb or something to happen, whatever that something was, I th that was just a silly move. Um, so if, if that is the case, if that winds up being true, that sort of negates what you just said of like, well, they had the, like, Maybe they didn't. Maybe Paul truly was doing that, which to me was was stupid. You you pulled the trigger on Justin two weeks ago before Kirk lands, before Baker resigns. So that like you set the tone for the market instead of letting the market right. decide, you know, where he lands because Dictate look what just happened. What Everything right. that could have gone wrong went wrong in terms of what we can get back in return for Justin Fields. Um, okay, that's that's thought number one. But thought number two is this the, this honestly, Jack, might just be the league telling you what they think about Justin Fields. Because this isn't the first time that the league has told us something about Justin Fields. He was the fourth quarterback taken off the board in his own draft. So, like, Atlanta, for all the rumors that were there, the same regime is there that was not interested in the first go-round. So that same regime has to, go, whether they talk to the owner or I don't know what, what you know, the CEO, whatever their... Uh, um, uh, or organizational structure, uh, organizational chart looks like they're gonna have to talk. The GM's gonna talk to someone and say, "Yeah, remember those things that I said of like a few years ago? I changed my mind completely, even though he's right. kind of still the same player, right?" So it's like, I guess what I'm saying is, I think I lean more towards scenario two because it's if we just settled for a six, what were the other offers earlier? Like, what were you know what I mean? Like, there's no way we were demanding a first if this is what we ultimately got. Like, if if you start the conversations with the first, and let's say they're not far off. And then Kirk Cousins go to goes to Atlanta. Baker goes back to Miami. Mason Rudolph or, or um, Kenny Pickett gets traded, and like you know, th these unfortunate things happen that sort of uh, ruin the Justin Fields trade market. Okay, we'll take a third now. It doesn't go to a six if you're starting the conversation at a one. So uh, you know, again, unfortunately, I think this is what the league thinks about him at this point. They don't think he's a starter. I just don't know how you think that. Justin Fields is a worse quarterback prospect than Sam Howell. And, and granted, the con I, I would assume the contract is what played into that a little bit more than Sam Howell's. Because Sam Howell is going to be a little bit cheaper. And, and obviously the Seahawks gave something back with to the commanders to get higher picks. But like, I just don't, I, I, I guess I just don't understand. Like, I, I can't believe we live in a world that that you and I were so fucking off base that Justin Fields would net a second round pick. Yeah, like that that to, today that feels like we're fucking crazy people. And and now there are Justin Fields. There's a Justin Fields cult out there of in, in Bears fandom that just you couldn't tell him anything. You and I are not a part of that. I think we've been very clear about that on this podcast. We're, we're, I, I made it clear a couple episodes ago. I was ready to move on to Caleb Williams. I, but but based off of the things we were saying about Justin Fields' supposed value, we sound like idiots. We sound like we're just fucking the 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 veil has been lifted from our eyes. And I just don't understand how NFL teams can watch what Justin not only has done but was also put in the situations he was now granted maybe we weren't as you know as, as maybe the turnovers maybe the fourth quarter play um maybe there are some nfl evaluator things that you and i just don't know to look for all very real possibilities you and i aren't professional evaluators I, but just looking at the, the the progress that he made last year with a legit nfl weapon and, and dj moore and the running ability that is really popular in today's NFL and, and the character of Justin Fields also is not something, it, it, this isn't yep. Kenny Pickett getting yep. pissed off that fucking Russell Wilson is here. Like Justin is around the league respected as a good person. Like that, that's just fact. I can't believe that only netted a six, a sixth round pick that could become a fourth. I, yeah, no, I know my mind. I, 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 I'm with you and we're wrong and we owe Nas lunch now. And, and I mean, it, it is what it is because but between the both of us, he also said super salad is considered lunch. He's getting a fucking Caesar salad for me. That's all he gets. Well, we, we need, we need to all, we need to figure out a time where we can actually go all eat together and, and figure out the, the bill situation. But, um, the speaking of the fields cult there, um, 
it's it I, they, they were strange to me. They were very strange because, and, and this is something that Adam Hogue and a lot of other Bears guys have touched on, the weird character assassination of Caleb Williams that had been going on was was weird by this fan base. And it wasn't only just dudes who I've seen that are like Fields cultists. It, 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 it was like, it was starting to, to seep into like real Bears Twitter of like, oh, like, can he handle this? Can he, like, where is this coming from? Because like right. high school teammates have come out, high school coaches have come out, his own teammates at US, USC has had a coach there, everyone. Like, there there has been no red flags to a point where people even dug into the, what about the ownership portion? What about the few rumblings that were going on? And, like, he genuinely looked surprised when these reporters asked him those questions, and it sort of more came out that, like, it was more his dad inquiring, how, how can we get around the CBA to do different things? And he really didn't know what was happening there. So, like, maybe there comes a point where you got to tell Pops, like, hey, dude, let's fucking slow down, and I'm going to make a gazillion dollars if I can bring a Super Bowl here. We're going to be okay. But until we cross that bridge, like, everyone comes with a little bit of something like that. You know what I mean? It just, it, it is what it is. So um, I, I'm curious to see the way people pivot because I feel like people like me, people like you, even Nas, who was, who was more critical of fields than we were, we never took the angle on either quarterback. And we were all to the point where we were ready to move on anyway. But like, we weren't character assassinating Justin Fields. We still like him. Like, I'm still rooting wherever he ended up, unless it was Green Bay, I was going to root for him. Like, I, I genuinely think he's a good talent. I think he's a good kid. I think he's a hard worker. I think he's a gym rat. First guy in, last guy out. A guy I'd let my daughter marry. Like, he's just one of those dudes. So, I, you know, the, I, I guess the other thing was like, dude, the tea leaves were there. Like, we knew, if you weren't stupid or in denial, you knew the Bears were going with, with Caleb Williams here. Right. So, like, the fact that people were looking to, 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 to do that, to, like, paint Caleb Williams out to be a bad guy or a soft guy even, like, it, it's, that's been strange. I think it's interesting where Justin landed, to be completely honest. It's very stable, what I would call very stable organization in the Pittsburgh Steelers with one of my favorite head coaches around the league. I'm not going to lie, Frank. I, depending on how this, <laughs> depending on how this Caleb Williams things goes, maybe, maybe, maybe this will become a Steelers podcast. We'll become Steelers fans. <laughs> it's very possible. It's, I've always kind of, kind of went back and forth a little bit with that, but uh, no, but uh, Ian Rappaport tweeted out um, basically that a source, uh, Tom Pal Palacero, that a, a source said that Russell Wilson is going to be the starter with Justin as the backup. Now, granted, that's before training camp, before the draft, things like that. But I think, I think Justin will, will get opportunities, of course. Um, yeah. I mean, it, it is disappointing that, Again, it feels like the Bears had a good prospect in their grasp and sort of just were not oh, yeah. able to do the things necessary to build that guy up. And and granted, it, it's such a tough conversation with I, I, I'm almost ready to just move on from the Justin Fields era because it was very toxic. It was very much just like it felt like very much the conversations we were having about Mitch all over again, where it's like well, we don't know if he's good because he doesn't have X, Y, Z. And again, that happened with Justin. I would almost argue that Mitch was put in a way, like Justin was never put in a position like Mitch was. Like, no, this year would have been that had they traded back, I think. Would have been 2018. Uh, having the chance to throw to DJ Moore and Keenan Allen. And whoever we draft at nine or whatever, they're, they're, they're going to get, yeah. Right. yeah. Like the, DeAndre Swift, like this is a, it's a very good offense, uh, at least, you know, as it stands. And I'm excited to see what Caleb does with Keenan Allen. I know we didn't talk a lot about that, give him a fourth for, for Keenan Allen. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's, it's sad. It's a sad day. Like I, I remember you and I just being fucking over the moon about, about the bears. Cause, cause we thought <laughs> if you remember, <laughs> there were a couple of thoughts happening, right? It was, oh shit, the Bears might trade for Russell Wilson. Oh shit, the Bears just signed Andy Dalton. Like, what are we gonna what are we gonna do? This fucking team's dead. Then it was, oh shit, the Bears just traded up. Are they going to take Mac Jones? And then it was Justin Fields, and you and I just kind of lost our, our minds at that. But you know, I think this was all sort of put into motion. I, I would say arguably after that Packers game, that week one loss to the Packers because if you remember 
you and I were just distraught at, at just what we had seen. Um, there were no excuses at that point. Was the team bad? Yes, absolutely. The team was still not very good overall, especially on the offensive side. But you and I had a raised expectations, especially with what we had heard in training camp with the connection between him and DJ Moore and the run game and blah, 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 blah. And they just get their fucking dog walked by Jordan Love and the Packers. And it, I, I feel like that sort of set in motion everything that that we had basically got to today. And then, of course, like I mentioned, if the Bears don't have 1-1, one, one, right, I think Justin is probably still a Bear. I think they pick up his fifth-year option, to be quite honest with you. Right. But now that opportunity, you, you, you just you can't move. You can't take that chance that Justin – you know, hopefully we'll turn it around in year four when you yeah. could get the best quarterback prospect in the draft. Yeah, I mean, when it comes, there's two things it comes down to for me is when when I had to like, when you, you know, season was over, you're emotionally disattached now. I mean, because again, let's continue to, to, to hammer home. Like this guy made the Bears fucking watchable over the last three years. Let's make right. no mistake. This was a right. shit team. This was an, especially in year two of his reign. Like he, that, that seven week or whatever it was, six week stretch was electric. Like he brought entertainment to this franchise that we haven't seen. I mean, we saw it in 2018 and then before then when the first year of Mark Tressman, like they've been a dreadful team. That's why I think people fell in love with them. Like he's an awesome talent. Um, the, but the two, the two reasons why you move on from him are what you mentioned is you still really don't know. Again, I don't put that on him. I, I I truly don't. like Because I think if you build around him better earlier, then you can say, hey, he, the guy stinks. It is what it is. Now you really move on. It was unknown because the shit around him for so long. It, it was just, you know, there's only so much anyone could do. Um, but then two, which really falls under his lab, is even with the shit around you, you were never consistent. We always saw the flashes. And, that, and that's what makes me think if someone can rein that in and, and make him be more consistent, you have a pretty high quality starter on your team especially for as long as he can be an elite athlete as long as th those legs are still there you got something if you can make him be more consistent but he just never was and and again that that is more so on him so maybe that doesn't mean like you know x amount of more 300 yard passing games what that means is justin protect the football in the fourth quarter be consistent protecting the football you know be, be consistent making the right decisions within the rhythm of the offense even if it's a bad offense it is what it is it's kind of what we talked about um when we finally saw uh, Nick Foles and Andy Dalton in um, Matt Nagy's offense, we were like, look, like you, you can just see the difference between a professional quarterback and them versus what we had in Mitch. Because even though like the offense still sucked, they were like making the timely throws. Everything was on time. The balls were where they were supposed to be. You never really got that with, with Fields, right? Like Even though we thought Getsy sucked at his job, there were moments where if the ball gets out on time, you're, you're talking about a whole new drive, a whole new game, a whole new quarter, right? It's so... The, 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 those were the two to me when I sat back, you know, thought about it more. Um, and it, it, it was just time. So really, I, really, I think the only, I, I'm excited to start the Caleb Williams era. Let's I'm sort of right. end there. I'm right. very excited about that. Um, I think the only qualm I have is the return. I thought we could have gotten more if we traded him earlier. And I do, I, I believe it's probably a little bit of both of what I laid out earlier between like polls holding out a little bit and the league sort of telling you what they think about Justin, I lean a little bit more towards route number one, though. If, if Paul, We've seen Poles pull the trigger. Like, he fuck, he just traded for Keenan Allen. He traded for Trace, Chase Claypool and Montez Sweat at the deadline. Like, he's not scared to make moves. I do think it was a little bit of number one. I, I, I think he, again, whatever it was he needed to see or hear, he was waiting until he felt super certain to move on from Justin over to Caleb, even if that meant tanking what you were going to get in return. I hate that. I hate that part of the process. I just, I disagree with it. It's the one of the, not, not one of the few, because there have been things that you and I have definitely criticized Ryan Poles uh, throughout his tenure and, and not just recently either in his rookie season when he's drafting corners and safeties and the, you know, his first picks over wide receivers, then drafting one of the oldest prospects who just flat out stinks uh, and, and who's somehow younger than Keenan Allen at this point. Uh like we we've had our criticisms of Ryan Poles, and I think this as as good as an off season as he's had so far, things I have agreed with. Um, I do think that there's maybe some other moves he could have made, but you know, it it is what it is at this point. But I just I hate that part of the process, and like while I do respect it because I do think he wanted to make sure 
because of how jo- Justin Fields was received throughout the, the, the Bears organization and the fan base. Um, you know, I, I can appreciate him wanting to be sure while that maybe doesn't mean he's going to get the highest return, but from an overall, now that Justin's gone, it's like, fuck, like, who cares? Yeah. Like, I want the best return for the Bears. Um, Frank, what I will say is I am more than ready, beyond fucking ready, to move on from the dual threat running, throwing quarterback and get back to a more passing centric quarterback. Someone more a little a quarter, more quarterback quarterback quarterbacky, right. Even though, you know, he could he could stand to be a, even a little more quarterbacky. If, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, like like someone who is whose focus more is on throwing the football and his, whose skills trend in that direction a little bit more. Um, because I just think that, you know, as, as a Bears fan base, like I don't think we were ready for to to be put in a position to be able to process that being a good runner still makes you an effective quarterback where it's not just throwing the football like the amount of people that just basically said well yeah so what he rushed for he broke an all-time rushing record like they just don't appreciate what Justin was able to do outside of passing the football that made him an effective quarterback like we're just not this this town is not First of all, it's not smart enough. Uh, second of all, we just haven't had the quarterback success to the point where we can just be like, okay, well, you know, the the hundred years that we've had haven't worked, so let's try something new. No, 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 no. We got to go back to, you know, pocket quarterback and statue, blah, blah, blah. It's just fucking stupid. Um, I don't think Justin was ever fully appreciated in this town for the things that he did well. I think it was always focused on the things that he just needed to improve on. Um and like you said, he made this team fucking bearable to fucking watch yep. over the yep. last three seasons. Um, it, it should not be understated how important that was. Because you remember those games with Tyson Bajan. After we, we'd we come on the post game, we'd do the podcast, and we'd just be like, fucking cares. Like, that could have been that for the last three years. But yeah, no, you're Justin not wrong. made it entertaining. Uh, I'm excited for Caleb. I am ready to kind of get away from the dual threat nature of, of, of Justin's skill set. I wish him the best in Pittsburgh. I'll, I will definitely keep keeping an eye on that team. I'm I'm curious to see what that looks like. Um, sad this is how it ended. Definitely not how I expected it when yep. uh, they drafted yep. him. But uh, I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to move on to Caleb and let's let's fucking get this thing rolling. Same, same. And you you, you know what's funny though is if you really break it down, uh, we're being a little we're, we're being a tad bit greedy with being upset about the return that we got for Justin. Because at the end of the day, just look at the raw numbers. They're not good in a lot of situations. Um, and we fucking lucked into one of the greatest quarterback prospects whoa, of all time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Locked in, please. This was fucking Ryan Pohl's master well, No, no, no. The, the trade, plan. of course, but oh, Carolina still had to do a lot of losing. Like, if they win three more games just by sheer luck. Ryan like, Poles knew he would. No, absolutely. That's why I, I, I no, I, I you, it's, it's, you said it sort of in jest, but I do think he identified them as a team that would do a lot of losing in the following year. Um, you know, it just is what it is. They, they weren't very talent rich, obviously, but at the end of the day, if Caleb winds up being a hall of famer, dude, we're never going to remember. No. We're never going to remember this. Like, no, who, who, I, who in I, Kansas can city I jump in real fast? Well, we're, 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 jump in real... Wait, wait, I'll throw it okay. to you. Last point. Who in Kansas City is like, man, we could have got fucking Patrick Mahomes at at 15 instead of 11, and we could have got, like, instead of trade. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it, it's... Okay. Yeah, I, I, I don't disagree. I But but I, I'm so... Let me sort this for a second. Let me, let me separate this conversation, because while I'm pissed about the return from the Bears side, because, like, draft-wise, it doesn't help a ton. Ryan Poles showed you what he thinks about late-round draft picks by basically trading the entire trading as many as he possibly could basically saying rounds one, two, and three matter most. So he better fucking hit on those. Um, what the reason that it upsets me, Frank, I think it's just like a respect thing. And I don't feel like Justin Fields is getting the respect that he deserves in this league. If that makes sense. And, oh, th- no, and that's I why agree. I'm frustrated by the return because like, like I said, when you're seeing trades for Drew Locke and you're seeing trades for, or maybe not a trade, but just a signing for Drew Locke, you're seeing Kenny Pickett get traded and, you know, the return. You're seeing uh, Sam Howell get traded and, and you know, uh, you, you just 
all of these trades that that fucking happen. Like, and, and this is what the league thinks of Justin Fields. I I think that's why it pisses me off the most because I just don't. I just it doesn't line up with the things that I watched while he was a Chicago Bear. It just it just and and again maybe you and I were overestimating his his skill set and and you know just overall maybe we were too high on Justin Fields. But I just don't see how that lines up for a guy who finished ninth in MVP MVP voting uh 2 years ago. Not this past season but the season before when he broke the rushing record like yeah. he finished ninth. I don't MVP disagree vote. with you there. He was in he was in the fucking NFL commercial. The scripting thing. He uh, Justin Fields was. Yeah. Well, and, I mean, and, and it, this is the, this is what the league thinks of him. Fuck out of here. The That's the bullshit. the other the other side of it is like the players voted him in the top one hundred. Like the the players are very That's high it. on Justin. So it's I, I I agree with you there. I think the league when I painted that second scenario that this is what the league thinks of him. I think they're dead wrong. And as, again, it's not to say I think he's elite because if I did, I'd, I'd be pounding on the table for us to trade back from number one. But to think this low of him, I have a take. I have a take. Maybe we'll we'll, we'll go next week. But well, it's I, a, I think it's it's, I think it's, it's pretty pretty quite co- quite an interesting take that I have. What? Uh, I think it's summed up in uh, if I can find that tweet. I don't know if I'll be able to. Uh, maybe not. But this is a league. That would choose to spend, what is it, $180 million on Kirk Cousins coming off versus an, $200 million for Lamar Jackson. Coming off I'm an Achilles. Saying. Yeah. Coming off an Achilles. I'm just saying the team didn't want Lamar Jackson. They didn't want MVP Lamar Jackson. They wanted guy who's only won one fucking playoff game, Kirk Cousins. And they didn't want Justin Fields. Weird. That same team didn't want Lamar or Justin. Lamar or Justin. What do those two things? They're both running backs. That's what it is. Why would they want them? To... <laughs> they got Bijan. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Uh, no, Frankie, but all, all seriousness, this is, um, it's a sad day. It's a somber day. I, I'm ready to move on. I'm, I'm glad it's over. Cause I was just, I, I, you know, I was telling you and Nas, I'm just fucking done. Like, I know. This, I know. This whole thing has been so stupid. Trade back, trade, uh, you know, draft, blah, blah. Just now we have a set course. It's, it's Caleb Williams. You're a Chicago bear. And, and let's just, let's see how this thing goes. This <laughs> it's going to be a very fun offense. Yeah. I think. To be honest, dude, I, I mean, good defense, we have some episodes until the draft, obviously. And I don't want to assume because it'll be our fucking luck that polls love JJ McCarthy at number one or something nuts. So let's wait until it's if official. Happens, official. We're Steelers fans. We're Steelers fans. I, I may not watch the happens. bears at all. Yeah. But I'm really looking forward to the episode in which we just talk about the expectations for Caleb Williams. I, I at least in our lifetime, I can't speak to anything prior this is the best situation that a rookie quarterback has ever walked into. Look at this fucking team, dude. This is not, we yeah. weren't the one win team. We won seven games last the year. The top, the top, the top quarterback has walked in. The top. Oh, that's what I mean. The number one overall. That, that, yeah. That's what I meant. Yeah, I that's what you. I meant. I yes. You. Yes. I got you. The, the number one overall be, pick, because usually it's a dumpster fire. Come at you. If, if they right. were, if Carolina had this pick, I mean, look at the fucking weapons there. This might be as good. I, I, I don't know about, Defense probably plays into that, but I would say at least if, if you don't want to say all time, at least since Peyton Manning was drafted to the Colts, cause he had Marshall yeah. Falk, he yep. had Marvin Harrison like that. Like they were, they were ready to go, you know? Yeah. Now the, the, and then, the overall team, I do think is better. Not non number one overall. The only one that came to mind was Justin Herbert, who was, what was he? Fifth or sixth? He went to the chargers and they had a lot of weapons at that point. Like the defense Fifth. still wasn't great, but yeah. That was, they still have Melvin Gordon. I think Eckler was a year two guy and Keenan Allen. Right. Um, they had another good receiver there. I'm blanking on who it was. And, and, and they've always had tight at the, the Hunter Henry was that, I mean, they, they had like, they had weapons. Um, Certainly wasn't fucking Andrew Luck 2012. Well, he walked into it's better than that. Yeah. 
No, it is. I, I mean, it's better than what Bryce Young walked into last year. Like, this <sighs> does not happen, dude. So, like, the expectation, like, I almost, like, I almost want to say our expectations should be higher, but then it's like, he also still is going to be a rookie. Like, it's such a weird balance of of, of what to think. <sighs> Yeah, I, and and that's something obviously we'll talk about, you know, when the draft happens and and leading up to the season about, you know, when we'll set team expectations, um, you know, why the Bears will be good, why they'll be bad, all the typical Bear with us podcast segments that we typically do. Um, but yeah, man, I you know it it, it sucks because you know one of the reasons I was so excited about the Waldron hire was because of the work he had done with Geno Smith and. You know, I, I was excited to see, you know, if that's the route that they did want to go, what he could do with Justin Fields. And 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 then they put this offense together with DeAndre Swift and Gerald Everett and Keenan Allen and, and, you know, really kind of just building a good NFL offense that feels very modern. Like the players that they're bringing in, I don't remember the last time the Bears signed like significant named players and on offense. And I'm not saying that's always going to win. Um, but these aren't like top, top or like tier two or tier three guys. You know, the, DeAndre Swift is a very good running back, mm -hmm. right? Keenan Allen is a very consistent slot receiver that fits this team perfectly. So I would have loved to see, you know, Justin Fields get an opportunity to play in this offense. Obviously it's not going to happen. I'll be curious to see what happens in Pittsburgh, hoping for that, you know, that, that 51% playing time yeah, for which him. For more than one reason, but <laughs> yeah, no, hey, but listen, um, I, I, I think we the next episode, I think we talk about that because I think he has a really good shot at it. To be honest with you, I think he'll crush it. I, I, I man, like, because because here's the thing about the Steelers: the Steelers aren't in a situation where they're just going to be sitting back and you know, like, they're not re reloading, they're not rebuilding. They're going to try to win this division based off of a lot of moves that they've made in the off season. Like, they're going to be, they're going to want to be competitive. Can Russell Wilson provide that early on in the season? Like, when does that, when does it sort of shift to, okay, maybe we need to see, because, because again, you have to see what you have in Justin Fields. They're probably going to pick up that fifth year option, I would imagine. Um, and if you, you want to pay him, you need to know what you have. You need to ha know how he's going to operate in that offense with, with Arthur Smith and, you know, with, with those guys, with George Pickens, things like that. So I would expect Justin to probably start more than 51% of the snaps or at least play 51% of the snaps. Um, even if it's just like, he might be a gadget player. There might like be a some gadget Hill type plays. of thing. Like what we saw, you know, in, in his first game, um, in, in LA against LA. Yep. Uh, in his rookie season, we might, we might see a little bit Maybe. of that. So it, Which, it might not be him just sitting on the bench the entire time. I know. I know. I hope that's not his full-time role, though. He, I wanted to get a chance Agreed. somewhere to actually play quarterback because we didn't give him much of a chance Agreed. here. But all right, Jackie. I think we hit all the points. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that that'll do it for this uh, emergency podcast. Justin, best of luck to you, sir, in Pittsburgh. Caleb, welcome to the Bears. Great situation to be in. Absolutely. Uh, fingers crossed we get that fourth round pick. Uh, so Justin or so polls can trade it for CD lamb. Oh, wow. Justin Jefferson, Justin Jefferson. How about that? Justin Jefferson is so fucking pissed that he's playing with JJ McCarthy that he asks for a trade and all he, all they have to give up is fourth round pick. What do you think? Um, who says no? Probably the Vikings. Uh, <laughs> thank you guys so much for listening. As always, uh, there will be a normal up podcast episode a little bit later this week. Um, appreciate it. Frankie, talk to you next week, man. Later, Jackie. Later, everybody.